exercise in phase of linear equations in 10th class mathematics. Okay. So let's look at uh, what is there in the uh, 4.1 exercise. Okay. So exercise 4.1 from the pair of linear equations in two variables. So the first problem we have is by comparing the ratios a1 by a2, b1 by b2, c1 by c2, find out whether the lines represented by the following pairs of linear equations intersect at a point or parallel or coincident. Okay, so we already learned how we can say a particular pair of linear equations are intersecting by parallel or coincident. So here, here it is. So you need to find the ratios of the coefficients of x and y and constants. Okay, that is a1 by a2 is the ratios of the x coefficients, b1 by b2 is the ratios of the y coefficients, and c1 by c2 is the ratios of the fixed terms. So a1 by a2, b1 by b2, and c1 by c2, if none of them are equal, then those lines are called intersecting lines and also called consistent lines. Okay. Similarly, when a1 by b a2 becomes equal to b1 by b2 and not equal to the c1 by c2 then they are called parallel lines okay similarly you have a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 and is also equal to the ratio of the constants which is c1 by c2 then those lines are called coincident lines and also call them as uh, dependent lines so if you can find the ratios of uh, uh, the uh, coefficients then you can easily tell what kind of uh, pairs of linear equations those are okay so this is what you need to follow right so i think you can do uh, Problem 1 is homework. There are three uh, problems uh, within that A, B, C. So do uh, the first problem completely as homework. And let's look at the second problem. Check whether the following equations are consistent or inconsistent. Solve them graphically. Okay. So first we need to check whether the lines are consistent or inconsistent. Here they have given a bit indirectly. They are basically asking for whether they are intersecting lines or not. Okay. So intersecting lines are also called as consistent lines. So same thing, you find the ratios of a1 by a2, b1 by b2, c1 by c2. If they are not equal, then they are intersecting lines and consistent lines. Okay. So there are uh, problems from a to i. So I think you can uh, do these problems a to i. Uh, find the ratios. If they are, if the ratios are not equal, then they are consistent lines. Say they are consistent lines, and then solve them graphically. Okay. So I will do one problem and the remaining uh, thing you can do as well. In the second problem, I will consider a C. Okay? So what I see is 3 by 2x plus 5 by 3y equal to 7. Okay? And similarly, the second linear equation is 9x sorry, minus 10y equal to 14. Okay? Now, I will make the first equation in a proper way. Okay, so let's consider the first equation: three by two x plus five by three y equal to seven, and uh, take the LCM and uh, normalize this equation. So the LCM becomes the six. So two it's a three times three into three is nine x plus three goes with the denominator twice. So two into five is ten. That is ten y. That equal to seven. So if I send this denominator to that side then it multiplies so the equation becomes 9x plus 10y that becomes 6 7 42 so this is equation 1 and you already have equation 2 okay so what is equation 2 9x minus 10y equal to 14 that is equation 2 so now you have two linear equations and just find the ratios a1 by a2 that is 9 by 9 it's becoming 1 and similarly find b1 by b2 that is 10 by minus 10 that is becoming minus 1 and similarly find c1 by c2 that is becoming 42 by 14 that is 3 so if you look at the values of the ratios a1 by b2 is 1 b1 by b2 is minus 1 and c1 by c2 is 3 they are not equal so you can say a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 and same case with c1 by c2 then you can say these lines are consistent Right? So these lines are consistent. Now the other thing is you need to solve them graphically. So solving them graphically, I think we have already learned how to solve these equations graphically. Uh, so first you take each line, substitute the values of x, find the values of y, then you get the coordinates x comma y, 
And similarly, solve the second equation by substituting the various values for x. And you find the values of y. You get the coordinates uh, x comma y. And uh, take a graph, graph sheet, and uh, draw the graph. Then you will get uh, what are the x comma y values. Okay. Uh, you uh, by drawing the uh, graph, you will get the lines. So if you draw, if you join those two lines, it will intersect at one point. So that is the uh, solution for. Uh, that's the intersecting point and that's the solution and that's the values for x comma y. Okay, so I think we can do uh, all the second problems as uh, <coughs> homework. So you have from a to y, so you try it as an uh, homework. Okay, now I will take it to the next problem which is uh, the third one. Okay, so till now uh, we have got the equations directly. Okay, so we have given the equations. You just need to find the ratios and uh, determine what what is the nature of the lines there, whether they are intersecting lines or parallel lines or coincident lines. Now there is some description is given. This is where you need to use your uh, uh, understanding skills to write the equations. You need to transform the uh, you need to transform the descriptive narration into equations okay let's look at uh, one one uh, such example where uh, we have the third problem in 4.1 exercise so that says neha okay one person neha went to a sale to purchase some pants and skirts okay when her friend asked her how many of each she had bought okay she answered the number of skirts are two less than the number of skirts are two less than twice the number of pants she purchases. Also, the number of skirts is four less than four times the number of pants purchased. Help her friend to find how many pants and skirts they have bought. Okay. So in this problem, they have not given the equation. However, they have given a descriptive with some couple statements. We need to write them in a equation form. Okay, first we in, in such problems, first we need to identify what are the variables. Okay, so if we read the problem again, Neha went to a sale, that means a shop, to purchase some pants and skirts. Okay, so the variables are pants and skirts. Right. So what I will say, X as pants and Y as skirts. So two variables, pants and skirts. Now read her uh, sentence. When her friend asked her how many of each she had bought, she answered, the number of skirts, the number of skirts, that is y, are two less than twice the number of pants she purchased. So we can write this as y equal to the number of skirts equal to 2 less than that means minus 2, 2 less than twice the number of pants she purchased. Twice the number of pants is pants is x, twice means 2x. Is it clear? This is very important. Writing into an equation form is very very important. So the number of skirts is equal to 2 less than twice the number of pants she has purchased. 2 less than is minus 2 and twice the pants is 2x. So y is the number of skirts equal to 2x minus 2. Twice the number of pants minus 2. And similarly there is another statement also the number of skirts is that is y is 4 less than 4 times the number of pants. Similar statement. The number of skirts equal to 4 less than Let's say minus 4. 4 less than 4 times of the pants purchased. That is 4x. You got that? So, if you look at here, the first statement says y equal to 2x minus 2. And the second statement says y equal to 4x minus 4. If you write this into a proper equation, the first equation becomes 2x minus y minus 2 equal to 0. So, this is equation 1. And just uh, rearranging. And similarly, 4x, this y goes to that side, that's minus y, minus 4 equal to 0. Right? So quickly we can validate whether these are consistent lines, I mean the intersecting lines or not. 
they should be intersecting because if you look at the ratio side, so a1 by a2, that is 2 by 4, is 1 by 2, and b1 by b2 is minus 1 by minus 1, that is becoming 1, and c1 by c2, minus 2 by minus 4, that is 1 by 2. So if you look at the ratios, a1 by a2 is 1 by 2, b1 by b2 is 1, and c1 by c2 is 1 by 2. So here, a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2, that means they are intersecting lines, right? So they are intersecting lines. So as these are intersecting lines, we should be able to find an intersection point that becomes the answer for this problem. That is x comma y. How many pens and how many skirts is what we need to find out. Okay, fine. So now, I think you know how to solve these problems graphically, but uh, I will just take you through uh, one, this problem, and the next problems I think you can do as a you know, homework. Okay, now, I will take the first equation, okay, which is uh, 2x minus y minus 2 becomes 0. So I will take some x values, and y becomes uh, 2 minus 2x. We already have it, right? So y is uh, 2x minus 2. If I send y to that side, it is 2x minus 2. Then find what is the value of y and also find what is x comma y. So this is how we do for trying the graph, right? Okay. So let's find uh, three, 3 or 4 points, okay? We don't need like 10, 15 points. Just find that. Uh, let's substitute x as 0. So y becomes 2 into 0 is 2, so minus 2. So y is minus 2, so it's 0 comma minus 2. That's one, one coordinate. Let's consider uh, x as 1. So y becomes 2 into 1 is 2 minus 2, that is 0. So that means the coordinate becomes 1 comma 0. And similarly, put the value 2. So y becomes 2 into 2 is 4 minus 2, that is 2. So this becomes 2 comma 2. Okay? And similarly find another point. Let's let's uh, limit to 4 points, okay? For coordinates. So for x value of 3, y becomes 2 into 3 is a 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. So this becomes 3 comma 4. Okay? So let's move it now. So you have got 4 points for the x values of 0, 1, 2, 3. You have the y values. So now you have the coordinates for like 1. So similarly find for line 2. So what is line 2? 4x minus y minus 4 equal to 0. Same case. Find, substitute the values of x and find what is y. y is uh, 4x minus 4. If you send y that side, 4x minus 4 or from the original equation, you have 4x minus 4. And then what is y? And what is x comma y? Okay? So, what is the value of Ax? So, let's consider the same values. Okay, 0, 1, 2 and 3. For 0, y becomes 4 into 0 is 0. 0 minus 4 is minus 4. So, this is this becomes 0, comma minus 4. Let's consider 1. 1, y becomes 4 into 1 is 4. 4 minus 4, that is 0. So, this becomes 1, comma 0. Let's consider 2. So y becomes 4 into 2 is 8 minus 4. That is 4. So 2 comma 4. Okay. And now uh, substitute y as So y becomes 4 into 3, 12 minus 4, that is 8, so the point becomes 3 comma 8. So, wait, are we getting any intersecting point? Yes, right. So, 
for the value of 1, you have an intersecting point 1, 0. And here for the value of 1, you have a point 1, 0. So, that is the intersecting point. Now, if you draw these two lines in a graph, okay? So, let's consider uh, a graph. So, I have minus values for y, right? Okay. So, let me take uh, the graph. The first and fourth quadrant is enough for me because uh, But in the graph you have, okay, so I'll take 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 8. And here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8, okay. And similarly here I'll have minus 1 minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on. Okay? Now, consider the first line. So the coordinates I have is 0, comma, minus 2. 0 and minus 2. x is 0 and y is minus 2. And then 1, comma, 0. 1, comma, 0 is here. And 2, comma, 2. 2 and 2. Okay? And then 3, comma, 4. 3 and 4. Okay, so if I join these lines using a scale in the graph, you get as a straight line. Okay, here it is not coming as a straight line because I have not equally drawn that. Okay, so if you join all these points, you will get a straight line. Okay, so that equation is 2x minus y minus 2 equal to g. Okay, next draw the uh, line for the second graph that is 4x minus y minus 4 equal to 0. So the points we have is 0, comma, minus 4. 0, comma, minus 4 is here. And then 1, comma, 0 is here. And 2, comma, 4. 2 and 4 is here. And then 3, comma, 8 is here. So if you join all these lines, you will get another straight line that is here. Okay. So this line is 4x minus y minus 4 equal to 0. Okay. So what is the intersection point? These lines are intersecting and the point is 1, 0. That means the solution for this is the solution for this is x, y which is 1, 0. That means x is 1 and y equal to 0. What is x? The number of pants. So the pants are 1 and then skirts are 0. So what Neha has done is, she has bought only one pen and no skirts. Okay, so that's how you can solve this problem. Okay, hope you have understand this. This is a, a very important uh, problem where you have not given the equation. However, you have given some description of what the problem is. And from that description, you need to derive the equations and then solve them using the graphical method. Okay, so this is a very important uh, uh, type of problems for uh, your uh, uh, 4 marks questions, okay, 4 marks or 8 marks questions, okay. So you have uh, pants and skirts that you need to identify as variables and then you need to get the equations from whatever they have defined, okay. So what they have defined is the number of skirts that Neha has bought is 2 less than twice the number of pants she has bought, so that is x minus 2 and uh, similarly 4 less than Four times of the pants she has right, 4x minus 4. If you substitute these answers, you can validate this basically. Okay. So what they say is the number of skirt equal to 2 less than twice the number of pants she bought. Twice the number of pants means 2 into 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. And similarly, 4 times the number of pants bought. So 4 into 1 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. So 0 skirts. Okay. So this is how we can validate. So this you anyways know how to find uh, the ratios and determine whether they are intersecting lines and then uh, take the first equation, find the coordinates for various values of x and take the second equations for various values of uh, x, find the values of y and the coordinates and then put that on the graph and the graph you get two lines and that intersects at a one point that is 1 comma 0 and that becomes the answer that is x equal to 1 and y equal to 0. So x is what? The number of pads and y is what? The number of skirts. So x equal to 1 and y equal to 0. That's the answer. Okay. Hope uh, 
Well, this is uh, clear, and uh, this this kind of problems is what uh, we get uh, for your uh, board exams. Okay. Good. So now I will move to the uh, next problems. So in the next problems, I will not draw you the graphs, but I can uh, take you to a level where we can write the equations, and uh, I will leave to you from there. You need to draw the graphs and take it forward. Okay. What? Okay, let me quickly uh, go to uh, the problem four. Okay. So the problem four here is first you need to understand the uh, problem clearly. Okay. If you understand the problem clearly, you can easily write the equation. If you write the equation wrong, that means everything goes wrong. Okay. Be careful. So the fourth problem, 10 students of class 10 took part in a mathematics speech. Okay, 10 students from class 10. So there are 10 students in class 10 took part in a mathematics speech. If the number of girls is 4 more than the number of boys, then find the number of boys and the number of girls who took part in the speech. Okay. So, here in this problem it is very clear that uh, there are two variables. The variables are uh, number of girls and boys. Okay? The variables are girls and boys. Okay? Let's consider girls as x and boys as y. Okay? And what is given is 10 students. Straight equation is x plus y equal to 10. Correct? A class has 10 students. Consists of both girls and boys. So this straight away I can write x plus y equal to 10. Okay, the number of boys plus number of girls is should be 10. And the other thing they have given is if the number of girls is 4 more than the number of boys. So number of girls, number of girls is x. X is 4 more than the number of boys. That means y plus 4. That's what this is a, this is a straight uh, simple equation. Okay. So the total students are 10, that is x plus y is 10, and the number of girls are 4 more than the boys, that's what we have to do. Okay, now you find how many boys and how many girls we have participated in the speech. Simple. So now, this is equation 1, and the equation 2 I can write it as x minus y equal to 4. This is equation 2. Okay, so these are intersecting lines. Because a1 by a2 is 1 by 1 and uh, b2, b1 by b2 is, okay, that's fine. a1 by a2 equal to 1 by 1, that is 1. And b1 by b2 equal to 1 by minus 1, that becomes minus 1. And c1 by c2 equal to 10 by 4. Okay, so they are not equal. So a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2, so they are intersecting lines. Right? So they are intersecting lines. So now you can find using the graphical method. Okay, graphical method you know, take the first equation, find the values of y for different values of x, you get the coordinates, take second equation, substitute the values of x and you get the value of y and uh, when you resolve that, you will get an answer. Okay, the other easiest method is, you resolve these two equations, you get the answer. Okay, so equation 1 and equation 2, if you add these two equations, y y gets cancelled, x plus x is 2x, 2x becomes 14, then x becomes 7. So, x is 7, if x is 7, y is 3, this is the answer. So, the girls are 7, 7 girls and 3 boys in the class. Okay, this is the answer, but you can do this using the graphical method. Okay, so that's problem number 3. This is simple. Uh, next, uh, let's go to problem 5. Okay. In the problem 5, 5 pencils and 7 pens together cost 50, whereas 7 pencils and 5 pens together cost 46. Find the cost of pencil and that of 1 pen. <laughs> okay, this is simple, this is right away. So the variables are pencils and pens. Pencils is one variable and pens is the other variable. Let's consider a pencil as x and pen as y. 5 pencils and 7 pens. 5 pencils, 5x plus 7 pens becomes 50 rupees. 
This is equation 1. 5 pencils and 7 pens together is costing 50 rupees. Whereas 7 pencils and 5 pens. 7 pencils and 5 pens is costing some 46 rupees. Fine. How much each pencil cost and pen cost? So this is right away. So two equations, equation one and equation two. Find a one by a two, five by seven, b one by b two, seven by five, and c one by c two, fifty by forty six. None of them are equal, so they are intersecting lines, and uh, you resolve them using the graphical method. Graphical method, as you know. Take the first equation, different values of x, find the values of y, x comma y, and then second equation, different values of x, find the values of y and different uh, coordinates, and put that on a graph, and you will get an intersecting point. So that intersecting point will become an answer. The answer I can uh, quickly give you. Okay, this is the answer for the earlier one. So the answer, if I directly resolve them, this is two equations if I resolve. Uh, I will multiply this with uh, let's say 7 okay this equation by 5 and this equation by 7 okay uh, 5 is 25x okay I am just doing it now okay just to give you an answer 25x plus um, 35y equal to Similarly, I need to multiply this with 7. This is 49x plus 7535y equal to 7642. So it was 28. 28 plus 4 is 32. Okay? So if I did this, then this is becomes 24x. That becomes uh, 72. And then the x becomes 72. X is 3, uh, Y becomes uh, 75. Sorry. And X becomes 3, uh, 50, so 35, so Y becomes 5. Okay? So the answer is X is 3 rupees and Y is uh, 5 rupees. Okay? So X is uh, pencil. Pencil is costing 3 rupees and uh, pen is costing 5 rupees. You can validate this also. 5 pens. And uh, seven is five pencils and seven. So five three is fifteen. The seven five is thirty five. Is fifteen. Okay. So this is the answer. A pencil cost three rupees and a pen cost five rupees. And the answer given in your uh, exercise is wrong. Okay. So this is the answer. So it is three rupees and five rupees. Okay. So that's problem number five. Okay. Let's get into. See, this is just I have calculated to give you the answer. But this is not the method you need to follow. You need to follow the graphical method. Okay? Right. Now, let's look at problem number 6. Okay? So what is problem number 6? Let's, let's consider here. So the problem 6 is, half the perimeter of a rectangular garden whose length is 4 meter more than its breadth is 36 meter. Find the dimensions of the garden. Okay, this is also a simple one. Uh, okay, so he is saying half the perimeter of a rectangular garden. So he has given an object uh, which is a rectangular garden. So let's first consider a rectangular garden. Whose length is L and the breadth is D. Okay, so what is the perimeter generally? The perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times of length plus breadth. Okay, and what he is saying is Half the perimeter of a rectangular garden. Half. Half means 1 by 2 times of 2 into n plus b is half the perimeter of a rectangular garden whose length is 4 meters more than its width. Okay. So this other equation he has given directly. Okay. The length is 4 meters. Length is equal to 4 meters more than its width. So b plus 4. Length is 4 meters more than breadth, which is n equal to b plus 4. And the perimeter also is given, right? So half of the perimeter 
half the perimeter of a rectangular garden whose length is 4 meters more than width, so that's one equation, and the perimeter, half of the perimeter is that 6 meters CSV. Okay, so this is 36. So these two, these two goes away. Then n plus b is actually 36. And the other equation we have is uh, uh, this I, if I, this is equation 1, and if I write this equation as like this, this becomes equation 2. If a b I am setting this side, so a minus b equal to 4. So there are two equations now. So you can quickly calculate a1 by a2. a1 by a2 is uh, 1 by 1, which is 1. b1 by b2 is 1 by minus 1, which is minus 1. And c1 by c2 is 36 by 4, which is 9. Okay, so a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 because, because it is 1 and minus 1. So they are uh, intersecting lines, right? So they are intersecting lines and uh, they have a common point and uh, you solve these two equations using the graphical method so you will get an intersecting point and uh, I can quickly give you uh, what is the answer for this this is simple for me to get L plus B is 36, L minus B is 4 so if I add these two equations 2L becomes 40 so L becomes 20 meters when L is 20 breadth is 60 meters okay this is the answer Okay, so you can do this using the interactive method. Okay, right, so that's uh, problem number 6. Now let me get into the problem 7, 8, and 9. With that, I can uh, close this session. Okay, hope you are getting it. Okay, there is a descriptive narration is given on the problem, and you need to translate that into an equation. First, you need to identify the variables which is x and which is y, and then you get the relationship in terms of equation okay so if you do that then uh, getting the equation correct is key here okay so understand the problem and that's how you write the relationship of the variables okay that's that's how you get the equation once you get the equation is correct then you know how to solve it using graphical method and finding the solution okay right Okay, so till now we have learned until uh, problem 6 and now oh, let's look at problem 7. Okay, so the problem 7 what we have is we have a linear equation 2x plus 3y minus 8 equal to 0. 2x plus 3y minus 8 equal to 0. He has given one linear equation. Write another linear equation in two variables such that the geometric representation of the pair so formed is intersecting line. Okay. So he has given one equation and asking us to write another equation which is intersecting. Okay. So this is very simple. So to have an intersecting line from the definition of it, the ratios of uh, the coefficients should not be zero, should not be equal. Okay, so what I can do is I can write uh, another equation. This is uh, this is nothing that you can solve or something. It is just by using the uh, definition. Uh, what you can do is I just uh, reverse the coefficients so that they are not equal. Okay, so I will write some equation like three x plus two y minus some constant c equal to 0. Okay? If you find a1 by a2, it's 2 by 3. Not equal to, uh, okay. And then b1 by b2 is 3 by 2. So they are not equal. So that means they are intersecting lines. And c can be anything. c can be anything. Okay? So this is one equation. Or if you want to substitute some value, you can substitute like 10 or 7 or whatever. Okay? So that's uh, that's the way. So this is simple, just uh, uh, just by knowing the definition. And also he has given now write two more linear equation so that one forms a pair of parallel lines and the other forms the coincident line. Okay, he has asked for the other two as well. Uh, the form of uh, so this is equation one, which is intersecting. 
Now he is asking us to write a parallel line also. Parallel line is what? A1 by A2 and B1 by B2 is equal, but C1 by C2 is not equal. Right? So I will write something like this. So 2x plus 3y minus uh, some constant again c equal to 0. So this becomes equation 2 which is parallel one. Okay, this c, this is c can be anything like 10 or 5 or 8 or whatever. Okay, and then I will write another equation 4x plus 6y minus uh, 16 equal to 0. So if you calculate a1 by a2, b1 by b2 and c1 by c2, they are all become equal. So that means they are coincident lines. So earlier he was giving the uh, the problem was given in terms of linear equation asking to find whether they are intersecting parallel or coincident. Now it's a reverse way. One equation is given and you need to write the other equation which is in the form of uh, uh, intersecting parallel and coincident lines. Okay? So this may be you get for the bits, okay? One line will be given and you need to find the other line uh, whether it is a parallel or whatever, okay? You can get in the bit mark questions. So that's the problem number 7. And let's now look at problem number 8, okay? So problem number 8, uh, some good understanding is needed, okay? Let's look at uh, problem number 8. Okay, now let's look at problem number 8. So the problem number 8 is, uh, listen carefully, the area of a rectangle, okay, again an object is given, which is a rectangle, so let's quickly draw a rectangle, so that we understand it better, okay. So L and B. Length and breadth. The area of a rectangle gets reduced by 80 square units. The area of a rectangle gets reduced by 80 square units. If its length is reduced by 5 units, so what he is saying is, if the length is reduced by 5 units, that is L minus 5, and the breadth is increased by 2 units and breadth is increased by 2 units. So what is happening he is saying is the area of the rectangle gets reduced by 80 square units. So what is the area basically? The area is L into B. So this L into B is reducing by 50 square units. So L into B minus 50 is, is reducing by 50 units when the length is reduced by 5 meters and breadth is increased by 2 meters. That means LB minus 50 must be equal to L minus 5 into B plus 2. We need to understand this clear. A rectangular object is given. In rectangle we usually have length and breadth and its area is L into B and perimeter is 2 times of length plus breadth. Okay. Now what he is saying is the area of this rectangle reduces by 50 square units when the length is reduced by 5 meters and the breadth is increased by 2 meters. So, he is translating this into a, another rectangle whose length is L minus 5. Okay, let's, let's look at like this. So, he is transform, translating this into another rectangle whose length is L minus 5 and breadth is B plus 2. And this area becomes the initial area minus 50. That is initial area is L into B and this becomes L into B minus 50. Generally we know what is uh, the area of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is length into breadth. What is the length here? L minus 5. What is the breadth here? Is B plus 2. And what is the area he is already telling us is L B minus 50. So that is the equation 1. So L B minus 50 is equal to L minus 5 into B plus 2. Okay, hope this is clear. So LB minus 50, let's resolve this. So L into B is LB plus 2L minus 5B minus 10. I'm just multiplying this L, L minus 5 into B plus 2. So the LB, LB gets cancelled. So minus 50 becomes uh, 2L minus 5B minus 10. 
If I send this minus 10 to this side, so this becomes 2L minus 5E equal to minus 40. This minus 10 becomes plus 10, so, so this is equation 1. Okay? And there's another thing here. So that's one part of it. The other thing is the continuation of the problem is if we increase the length by 10 units, okay, he is translating into another rectangle. Okay, let's understand what is that. If we increase the length by 10 units, that means length is becoming L plus 10. Okay. And you decrease the breadth by 5 units. Five units. The breadth is decreasing to 5 units. That means B minus 5. And what he is now saying, the area will increase by 50 units. So, the area is a LB is increasing by 50. From the initial rectangle, he is increasing the length by 10 and decreasing the breadth by 5. The area must increase by 50 square units is what we can So that's another equation. Okay. So uh, that's equation one. So the second equation is I'll write here. So LB plus 50 is equal to actually what is the area? Length into breadth. What is the length here? L plus 10. And what is the breadth here? B minus 5. Okay. If you resolve that, LB plus 50 is equal to L into B minus 5L plus 10B minus 50. Right? You just multiply that. So LB, LB gets cancelled. So 50 becomes minus 5L plus 10B minus 50. Right? So I will rearrange this so that uh, if L and B, if I send this side, this becomes uh, 5L minus 10B. And if I send this to that side, minus 50, minus 50 becomes minus 100. Okay? This is equation 2. So the equation 1 is 2L minus 5A equal to minus 40 and the second equation is 5L minus 10B is equal to minus 100. So this is equation 2. Now, we can try to raise it, are intersecting lines. A1 by A2 is 2 by 5, B1 by B2 is... Uh, Okay, find A1 by A2. A1 by A2 is 2 by 5 and B1 by B2 is equal to minus 5 by minus 10 which becomes 1 by 2. So they are not equal. So that means they are intersecting lines. Now you can use the graphical method to find uh, the intersecting point of uh, these two lines. So take the values of L, find L and B and take the values of uh, L here in the second equation and find the values of uh, L comma B. Draw the graph and that will intersect at one point. So that becomes the solution, the intersecting point, that is L comma B. Whatever the value you get as L and B and the intersecting point, that becomes the answer. So that becomes the length of the rectangle. Uh, L becomes the length of the rectangle and B becomes the width of the rectangle. So for you, if I want to quickly give you an answer, so let me resolve this. So I multiply this by 2. So this becomes 4L minus 10 b equal to minus 80 where 5 l minus 10 b equal to minus 100 I do minus here plus here plus here so this cancels so minus here will become five l becomes 20 so when l is 20 So L is, uh, so the length is 20 meters and breadth is 16 meters, okay, that's the answer. So what you need to solve it is in the practical method. Okay, this is a bit difficult to understand uh, when you are trying to write in the form of an equation. So initially he has given a rectangle. Uh, I am assuming that the length is L and B where breadth is B. And what he is saying is, 
he is translating these rectangles into different uh, rectangles. One time he is increasing the length and uh, reducing the breadth or uh, increasing, decreasing the length and uh, increasing the breadth. So, in the first case what he has done is, he is reducing the length by 5 units and uh, increasing the breadth by 2 units. That means he is saying the area is reduced by 50 square units. So, that means the area is reducing. So, actually it is LB and that is reducing by 50 units. That means LB minus 50 is what? The transformed rectangle that is L minus 5 into B plus 2. So, LB minus 50 equal to L minus 5 into B plus 2. If you resolve that, you get number equation 1. And in the second case, what he is saying is uh, the length is increased by 10 units and the breadth is decreased by 5 units. In that case, the total area is increased by 50 units. So, that means LB plus 50 is becoming L plus 10 into B minus 5. Okay, if you solve that, you get equation 2. Now they, you can find uh, the ratios a1 by e2 and b1 by e2 and they are not equal, they are intersecting and then you can uh, solve these equations using the graphical method and the answer you should get is length is 20 units or meters or breadth uh, is 16 units. Okay? And now we have a final uh, last problem. That's the number minus problem. Okay? With that we will end this session. So that is also you need a bit more understanding. Okay, you need a bit more understanding for the ninth problem also. See, it is just that you need to understand the problem and then put that relationship between the variables as correct. That forms an equation. Okay. Now the ninth problem, which is the last problem in the 4.1 exercise, is in tenth class, if three students sit on each bench okay listen the problem carefully if three students sit on each bench one student will be left okay if four students sit on each bench one bench will be left find the number of students or the number of benches in that class so in class 10 so here you need to understand what are the variables so there are two variables one is the students the other is bench okay let's consider variables students and benches let's consider x as the students and y as the benches so what you are saying is in class 10 if three students sit on each bench three students sit on each bench one student will be left so three students sit on each bench one student is left that means one student is left means what are the others uh, the remaining students are x minus 1 can I say that when three students are sitting on each bench one student is left that means the students who are sitting on the benches are x minus 1 right that should be equal to 3y. I will explain you. So, we have x number of students and y number of benches. The first statement is, three, if three students sit on each bench, one student is left. That means, I am taking it as x minus 1 number of students are sitting in y benches right so what is x minus y x minus 1 is the number of students who are basically sitting on benches so how many benches are there y benches how many students in each bench 3 so that means total number of students who are sitting on the bench is 3 times of y right let's consider i have uh, 6 students and two benches so six students are sitting on two benches so that means three in each right so that becomes a six let's say i have seven students seven students two benches three three on each bench so that means one student is left so seven minus one is a six and that is equal to three on each bench into two benches three into two six so that is getting equal right so the number of students sitting on the benches is x minus one and similarly, in terms of benches, if I represent, 
So Y benches and on each bench three students, that is three times of Y. So the total number of students which are sitting on benches is X minus 1, which is nothing but three times of Y. So this is equation 1. This is important, you need to understand. Okay? And the next statement is, if four students sit on each bench, one bench will be left. 